In this video we will go over the assembly process of the lead screw upgrade for the Prusa i3 3D printer kit. So what you'll receive in your upgrade kit are two lead screws. It's 8mm lead screws with a pitch of 8mm. You receive four blue 3D printed parts, ABS parts. Then you receive uh, self-tapping screws. Then you'll need six of them. You might receive eight in your in your uh, kit. Two flexible couplings, it's the 5 to 8 millimeter flexible couplings, two M6 by 16 bolts and then some basic tools to to assemble this upgrade. We will start off to mount these big two uh, printed components to the lead screws. So I will do that is we'll take it from the top and it will push over the, the nut of the lead screw. It should fit tightly. And then we will use two of the three holes. Um, we'll use the self-tapping screws to mount the brass nut to the, to the blue component. And we'll mount the two where the, the screw goes deep into the blue component. So this one that one we don't mount and that one obviously there's no need to to mount it in and we'll do the same for the for the other side okay so now the lead screws look like this with two screws mounted there on the left hand side and two screws mounted there on the on the right hand side. So these two extra ones that you'll have are for the the extra hole. It's not necessary to put them in. It's basically if um, those two strip then there is a, a third hole to, to use but actually you only need one to keep this brass nut from rotating inside the, the blue component. Now the next step is to remove the X switch from your printer and then we'll mount it with the exact same screws we'll mount it to the bigger component of the two and it will face to the left hand side so this one at the end will mount there so this X switch will mount on top of that one so now you can see that I removed the, the X switch from the mount and there's the two screws We'll get the two nuts when we, at, which is at the back of this component, when we remove this component. So the next step is to remove here where the threaded rod goes through the nut. We'll remove that component as well as the one on the on the other side. Please note that when we remove these, that the whole X carriage will be or Z carriage will be able to move up and down. So we need to put something below the um, the rods here to keep it from falling down onto the bed. Um, you'll see that these screws does not go through to the back so we'll either need to use the sharp nose pliers to keep the nut steady at the back when we loosen it here else if you have a, a very small spanner that also works very nice to to keep the, the lock nut at the back while you turn the the screw from the front. Okay, so now we've removed the mounting that where the, the nut on the rod mounts to the, the Perspex component and now the, the whole Z carriage can move up and down freely. So, and we did that on, on both sides. The next step will be to remove the, the four long M3 screws that the two on the left hand side that mount this component and then the top one of the the two on the right hand side so the one there on the bottom right hand side we we won't undo it will mount in in that hole from the from the inside so we re release those three on this side and yeah then we'll go to the next step Okay, so we've removed those three screws. 
and this component um, can loose from there and now we have those three screws with the three lock nuts and the two M2 nuts that was mounted at the back of, of this component. So what we'll do now is we'll take the uh, component that looks like this and we'll mount the, the Z switch to it. Uh, the only thing that we will change is we'll flip it around so that the switch faces to the bottom. You'll see that this the switch now mounts a little bit higher than previously and so we flip it around so that the lever faces to the to the bottom and we mount it with the two M2 screws and nuts. Okay, once we've mounted it, it will look like that. And the switch can be pushed. So the next step is to take one of the flexible couplings with the 8mm hole to the top and we fit it to the to the lead screw. Now before we can mount the, the lead screw to the, the motor shaft we will need to move the, the Z switch. If you have a Z switch that's mounted to the frame then you'll need to do this step. If you have uh, auto leveling um, installed on your printer then you can skip this step. So what we'll do is we'll undo the, the two M3 bolts that come from the bottom we'll undo the two perspex, small perspex components and we're going to make a slight change to the, to the mounting we're going to turn the, the perspex components around but we're going to leave the switch with the, the lever to the left hand side so we'll need to undo the two M2 bolts as well that, that fixes the switch because we want the lever to the left hand side but we want to flip the Perspex components around so that they are flush on the left hand side of this component. Okay, so now we've remounted the Z switch so that the lever is facing to the left hand side and the Perspex components are flush on the left hand side of the, the bottom component. Now we will remove the, the thread rod push up the, the tube then we can take it out and we will slot the, the lead screw in. Now you can turn the, the lead screw till this blue component goes over the, the bolt that we left in the white perspex component and now we can take these three M3 bolts and mount this blue component to the, the perspex component. Now we've mounted this blue component to the perspex component with those three screws and uh, the X switch is mounted and the last step is to fix this um, the flexible coupling. You'll notice that it can move up and down so the first thing to make sure is that the lead screw is touching the shaft of the motor else the flex of the coupling will um, have an effect on your on your Z height so it will increase your, your inaccuracy or your um, spring effect so what we do is we lift we push the, the coupling down till it touches the bottom then we lift it up a little bit that it just above the the face of the motor and then we tighten the two screws in the coupling so that it clamps onto the motor shaft and uh, the lead screw shaft. The last step on this side is to take the other printed component that looks like this. It's marked with an R at the back. Now the the side with this flange fits on top and this profile that you see here is the exact same profile as that curvature of this top plate. So this one will fit in here. You might need to release those two screws that you can lift this plate up 
and then we mount it with one of the M6 screws from the top. When it's mounted it looks like this. The purpose of this component is to hold the lead screw in place at the top and the orientation of this component is very important. That's why this front needs to be aligned with the Perspex component and you'll see that there's cutouts designed into the side and that's when the Z carriage moves up the mechanics goes into those slots so that then this component won't stop the Z carriage from moving up. Okay, now the last thing on this side is to put this M3, this 50mm long screw, to take it out of the, the original component and put it into the new one so that it will push the, the switch, the Z switch when the, the print arms. So there you can see we've mounted the long and 3 by 50 screw into the blue component and that will trigger the Z switch here at the bottom. You'll see that it will now push almost directly on top of the, the black switch that is below the metal lever. What we found is that the metal lever increases the or decreases the accuracy where the, the switch triggers. So if it pushes more to the left then it's not as accurate but if it the closer it push on top of the switch you're also welcome to remove the metal lever so that the, the screw presses the, the switch itself and that's basically the the most accurate setup that that you'll get.